we've been in this series, I Have Questions, and the goal of the series really is to answer questions that you may have, uh, but also to answer some questions that you may not be asking. Um, the reason is I say it that way is because, again, there's some questions that a lot of times when there are urgent things going on in our life, uh, we want to know the answer to those things, like how does God help my relationships? In fact, one of the questions that comes in often when we do these kind of series and also came in again this time is that does God care? And if God cares, why is there suffering in the world? And, and I thought that was an incredibly good question, especially when you're in the middle of suffering and going through some stuff. So as I kind of began looking into it, I recognized I probably wasn't going to be able to do it um, just in one message. And since next week is Mother's Day, I didn't want to do a message on suffering on Mother's Day. Because how many of you know most of us caused our mothers to suffer bad enough as it was, and they don't need to hear another message on that. And, and so today I want to answer a question that as a child of God, you may not actually be asking it, but the moment I say it, we all kind of wonder, yeah, is that really something? And the, the question I'd like to answer for us today is, how, can I, how do I hear God's voice? How, how do we learn to hear the God's voice? And so today I want, I want to talk about actually hearing from God. And, and I want you to know that if you're here today and you are a child of God, that is actually is in your spiritual DNA that you were designed to hear from God. That you're, you're not a problem that you, you think, I can't hear from God. You were designed to hear from God. But what many people fail to understand is that hearing is something that actually has to be developed. Uh, in fact, when they run tests about people that are having conversations and they, they measure the energy level that they're giving in the conversations, the person that is talking is, is actually giving less energy than the person that is listening. Because when you're talking, you're talking about something that's important to you and it sometimes just flows off of you. But when you're having to listen, especially when it's, you're thinking, this is crazy. You know, why are you talking like that? Or don't you know better than that? It actually requires more energy. And, and when someone is talking to us, we often think that we're hearing something that they actually may not be saying. Right. In fact, I, I talk with couples quite a bit when I'm doing counseling, and a lot of times they, one of them will say, well, you said this, and the person will go, I, I didn't say that. And, and they'll spend 20 minutes arguing about it. Right. And so I have to kind of sit back, let them get their argument out to recognize they may have said it and they just heard it wrong. Or they may not have said it, but that's what they heard. Right. Y'all ever been there before? Yeah. Yeah. There's a story about a wife who asked her husband to go to the supermarket, and she said, go get a carton of milk, and if they have avocados, get six. So the husband comes back with six cartons of milk. And so the wife says, why did you get six cartons of milk? The wife said, because they had, or the husband said, because they had avocados. <laughs> Some of you will get that a little bit later. So our hearing, our, our ability to listen actually has to be developed. But I hope that you understand today that you were designed by God to hear from God. Your heavenly father wants you to be in relationship with him. He wants you to hear. So it's in our nature as children of God to have faith. And it's the seed of faith inside of you that actually enables you to hear from God. People will say all the time, and again, it's why I wanted to tackle this question, is that I can't hear from God. If that were true, and just so you know, it's not, but if it were true, you wouldn't be a child of God. Because our conversion, our salvation experience to actually become a child of God is a response to an invitation from Him. See, the Bible says that no man can come to the Father. Nobody can be saved except that the Spirit calls us, the Spirit draws us. It's not initiated by us. We didn't just one day decide, well, I guess I'll get saved. God had been wooing us and God had been drawing us. And, and I would venture to say that when people surrender their lives to Christ here at Amarillo Fellowship, like they do almost every Sunday, most of them would not say, I heard the voice of God. But they became aware of their, their lost or unsaved condition. They became aware of their need for God. So what's the result of? It's the result of hearing from God. Is this making sense today? See, we as followers of Jesus Christ, as his children, we have to change our mindset about what hearing actually is. Because comprehension or 
understanding, complete understanding, is not the evidence that we've heard. My, my grandbabies, as I'm talking to them, there are things that they understand. No. You know, they, I say they understand it. I think they do. They don't respond like they understood it, but they understand that. But there are times when I speak things over them that they don't understand the comprehension of it yet. Like I speak to them as we're praying over them. You are a mighty woman of God. You have an amazing destiny and purpose on your life. You, you are, you are going to be amazing as you continue to step into all that God has for you. They may not be understanding. So comprehension is not the, the recognition that we're hearing. See, because we have a tendency to put God on the same level as we are as humans when we talk to one another. But, but God's languages are so diverse that God speaks things sometimes to us that are so deep and so profound that they are actually sometimes above our pay grade, if, if you understand that concept. We, we're just not arrived to a level of understanding that yet. See, where God is actually speaking to our spirit man. And, and we have a tendency to see ourselves as a body that has a spirit and a soul. But you really really actually are a spirit being. It is the thing that will live forever. It's the thing that when you give your life to Christ, it becomes a brand new creation. Your soul is being saved. Your, your, your body will one day be saved. But you're a spirit being. And God, when God speaks, he speaks, first of all, to our spirit man. He makes a deposit that may take days, weeks, sometimes even months to actually unfold. But he's speaking to us all the time. Like someone in business who makes a decision that just seems brilliant. They, they make this decision, and it's a, it's a gold mine. They, they invested somewhere. They did something, and wow, these amazing things started showing up. Or say with a family member or a friend, you, you give this gift to them, just kind of unaware of what's really going on, and it was so timely. You, you didn't even know that they needed that. And, and we often assume that brilliant idea or make that timely decision when not realizing that God actually spoke to us. He was actually speaking. He actually spoke during the night or weeks or months before, but we sometimes don't make the connection between God speaking and the idea that we had. What we typically see as a brilliant decision or some lucky coincidence was actually the product of the voice of God that he speaks. Now, how many of you would say that you've been in a season or maybe you feel like it's been your entire life where you just feel like you're not hearing the voice of God, show of hands. But maybe you're sensing his presence. Like maybe this morning during worship, you feel like, I don't hear the voice of God, but man, in the moment of worship, you suddenly begin to feel his presence. That's his voice. That's, that's his voice, and when, when I'm preaching and I'm speaking and reading passages of Scripture through his word, his, his word is his voice. Yeah. See, when, when the word shows up, that is his voice. We, we don't often interpret it as his voice, and yet that's actually what it is. See, it's clearly the voice of God as, it's, it's clear the voice of God as anything that we hear. Right. See, one of the ways he speaks is through his word. One of the ways he speaks is through his presence. He begins to just connect with us. You, you walk in into a service and you've had a challenging week that, man, just seems like all hell broke loose and suddenly you're singing a song and all of a sudden you feel like the presence of God comes down and he wraps around you. And you feel him just loving on you. Man, for me, honestly, as I sit up here in the front and I'm worshiping God, sometimes I, I just start bawling because I feel God talking to me with his presence in those moments. See, Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, we are alive today because he speaks. We're alive. The fact that you and I are here today is evidence that he speaks. He speaks things into existence. You think about the world. We think about Genesis chapter 1, that in the beginning God spoke spoke and the worlds were created, we don't recognize that God is still speaking to create things in our world. So how do we do that? Well, we have to learn how to live by faith. Again, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, one of my favorite verse says this, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. In fact, would you say that with me? So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Can we say it one more time? So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. 
Now, I've always taught, and I still believe it, that faith comes when we, we hear, and we hear, and we hear, and we hear the words of Christ. But I think there's a, a deeper revelation that God is actually wanting us to understand, something we've been missing, something that God is actually trying to tell us from that verse. And it says that faith comes from hearing. It, it, it's actually not the background noise because we've all been in the middle of a movie or in the middle of a football game and somebody comes up and they start talking to us and we can tell they're talking and we may even be nodding at them but we're really not hearing what they're saying. Faith comes from hearing. It comes from hearing the words of Christ. See, we want to learn how to hear God's voice. If you're here today and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, I hope this is your prayer. You want to learn how to hear God's voice because sometimes we don't want to hear God's voice because the way we were raised, God is mad and angry at us all the time. And if we hear God's voice, all he's going to do is list our problems and faults from the weak. Just so you know, that's not the voice of God. The Bible says that God takes all of our sin, he casts it as far as the east is from the west, and he remembers it no more. He doesn't remind you of your sin, he reminds you of your righteousness. He reminds you of who you are in Christ Jesus today. So I'm hoping that you're, after today, going to get a fresh hunger to hear God's voice so that you're finding something, not, so that we're not finding something in addition to Scripture, but we're clarifying what has actually already been written in His Word. Because that's what man does. Man adds to the Scripture to try to clarify, and God's going, no, no, no. Listen, it's the Word of God. God the Father spoke to Abraham about sacrificing his son Isaac on the altar. And as the knife is coming down in the, in the, in the midnight hour, if you will, God says, oh, never mind. Don't, don't do that. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that Isaac was pretty happy that his father kept listening to the Lord. Yeah. See, many Isaacs have been slain. Many things, many promises that God has birthed in our life because people have listened to what God said, but they stopped listening to what he's saying. Because what God said to us 20 years ago might have worked back then, but God wants to say something fresh to us right now. And it's actually the present tense voice of God that actually causes faith to operate and manifest in our lives. That we're hearing him in that moment. It, it's the very nature of faith implies that you're actually hearing. See, the fact that I have faith means that I'm hearing let me say that again. The fact that I have faith actually means that I'm hearing. Remember I talked last week about faith is actually a gift? I didn't do anything to earn it and deserve it. God gave it to me. That's what's happening when a situation comes up and you're believing God for a breakthrough. You see the problems. You're, you're not unaware. See, this week, I'm not unaware of the sickness I have in my body. Okay, I'm not unaware of the, the attack of the enemy. But what I'm more aware of is the promises of God. So in God's timing and in his moment, I'm trusting him. Well, Richie, isn't that just kind of positive thinking? Yes. As opposed to negative thinking? Yes. In my Wednesday men's small group this week, they were telling me a story about a man who, who lost his job um, uh, his home got damaged, the insurance isn't taking care of it, he's actually going to have to move back to Florida. And, and the man said, you know what, I'm just trusting God with this. I th I'm just believing this is God's plan for my life. Now, I don't know if it is God's plan for his life, but his wife is freaking out. She's distressed. She's freaking out and just going, oh my God, what's going on? Both of them are going through the same situation. How many of you know the husband is going to be a lot more at peace, he's going to be a lot more relaxed than the person that is freaking out? Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, Pastor Richie, don't they need to be concerned? What you're saying is don't they need to worry? No, I think the Lord, the Lord was pretty clear on that for us not to worry. And what you're going through, you're going through it, but you're going to come out the other side. So when you're believing God for a breakthrough, it's because you have a hope, a confident expectation in the goodness of God. How did you have that faith? God spoke. He spoke through his word, and it became illuminated to you and alive to you. See, it's my hope and prayer that what I'm sharing with you today is that we begin to broaden our perception. We begin to broaden our perspective of how God speaks to us. That it's not the voice of Charlton Heston. If y'all remember those old movies, Ten Commandments, I always say things that date myself, so you'll just have to forgive me. But Charlton Heston, this voice, that's not always the voice of God because God speaks in multiple ways. Yes. He does. He speaks to us through his word. That's, that's honestly the primary and foundational way. 
But he speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through situations. He speaks to us through circumstances. He speaks to us through other people. He speaks to us in a still, small voice where all of a sudden we're alone and he just drops something in our heart. But the main thing that we need to understand is that you were designed by God to perceive and hear the voice of the Lord. You were designed by God to hear from him. It's already in your design. Maybe not fully developed yet, but it's in your design. And learning to hear is a maturing process. It is. It, it's taken me a while to mature as a husband to learn how to really hear my wife. Amen, guys? It takes a process. So there's a maturing process. Here's how Hebrews 5 puts it. It says, but solid food, the, the, the meatier things of God, are, is for the mature who because of practice have, have their senses trained to discern good from evil. They're, they're having their senses trained. We're, we're training our senses. Human physical senses. They can actually be trained by immersion in the presence of God. Now, that doesn't mean I have to come to church to be in the presence of God. It means that I start in the morning with the presence of God in my quiet time, in my Bible reading, in my prayer time, and then I invite him to go with me all day long. That everything that I'm going to be dealing with or situations that I'm going to come up against, I'm asking the presence of God to be with me in those moments. And though, being in the presence of God is what trains us to distinguish good from evil. Now, I don't know if you are aware of this, but when they train people who work in the banking system to, rent, to recognize counterfeit money, they only study real money. They don't, they don't study counterfeit money. They only study the real money. And they become so exposed to the real that the counterfeit begins to stand out. They may not even know why. But they're looking at it and going, man, that coloring just seems off a little bit. Or, you know, it just doesn't feel quite right. But they recognize something is wrong. And that's how we learn how to discern good from evil. We don't discern evil by studying evil. We don't. We get so immersed in the presence of God, in the goodness of God, that we're thinking about him all day long, that anything that doesn't fit in his nature, we start recognizing as evil. So we have to learn by learning how to stay immersed, okay? And again, I'm not talking about you closing your eyes while you're driving down the highway praying, all right? You keep your eyes wide open. And I'm just talking about having those conversations with God that you're listening all the time. So we, we learn how to stay immersed in his presence because presence is his voice. The presence of God is God speaking to us. Again, I love it again when he's wrapping his arms around me telling me how much he loves me. And sometimes we're not ready to actually understand or move in what he's saying. And, and that's what often happens even when we're worshiping. We, we sense the presence of God and the, the spirit of God, is, our spirit is connecting with his spirit. Listen, I want to encourage you, in those moments, don't be too quick to try to analyze what he's doing. Don't, don't analyze it. Just be quick to be a pliable child, to just kind of lean in. Be like a sailboat. Get your sails up and allow the wind of the Holy Spirit to direct you into things that God wants to do in your life. See, we don't discover God through analysis. And this is where some of you get really challenged because you think all of the things of God are, have to be understood right up here. It has to happen down here first. It, God, God reveals himself to a surrendered heart, to people that are surrendered to him. It's, listen, it's not that understanding is wrong. He calls you and I to pursue wisdom, to pursue understanding. It's vital. It's important to our relationship with God. But the problem arises is when we only obey when we understand. And sometimes I read some things, especially early on, and I was like, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure how to do that. We need to be ready to obey all the time. Because when, then if we, if we do that, if we only obey when we understand, then we actually have a God that actually looks like us. He, we're trying to get him down to our level. And what God is looking for is people that are yielded to him who say yes to him even before he speaks. In, in fact, it's the heart that says yes even before God speaks that actually attracts his voice. That, that makes him want to jump in with us. And so, again, we have this verse in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so, that says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Listen, God will not speak inconsistent with his word. 
Let, let me say that again because I hear people from time to time telling me that God's told them to do something that I know is so inconsistent with his word and they know it's inconsistent with his word. God will not speak inconsistent with his word. That's why exposure to his word helps us recognize the right voices. But it also helps us recognize the wrong voices. There's a story of a family and they're driving on a mountain road and suddenly the son from the back seat says, hey, there's a boulder in the road around the corner. So the father slows down and goes around the corner and sure enough, there's a, there's a big boulder sitting there. I- impressed that his, their son could actually hear from God, the, the parents start asking, what else is God saying? And the son said that we're supposed to go to McDonald's. <laughs> see, that's probably typical of most of us. I, I got it right once, so let me see if I can extend it to my will. Right? I've I've got a great plan for my life. I heard God once. Let me kind of tell you what my will is. So again, faith comes by hearing. But the capacity to hear comes from exposure to his word. I hope this is beginning to make sense because, again, if you grew up where you had to read the word of God, it's a checklist. And if you do it, then God's going to bless you. You're, You're not understanding that God's already blessed you. We read the word to understand how God has blessed us. And as we read the word, it's actually his voice speaking to us. See, and again, it's not just listening to the recorded word because you could put on a word and on your phone and listen to it all day long and have... you think you might have great faith. Listen, it doesn't work like that. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying that's not important because we need to listen to God's word like that. But faith comes from really being able to hear You're really hearing sometimes it would be better to read a few verses than multiple chapters just so that you can hear, hearing the living voice of God. Listen, as you read the word of God, and again, sometimes we read it and we don't fully understand it, you may not even be fully aware of what was just said. But sometimes we know that something was just deposited in our life. There have been so many times in my life that I've been stuck in a passage that I just couldn't seem to get away from. That, that ever happened to you, one of them for me is the, of the seed and the sower, where, where I just couldn't get away from the passage and I didn't fully understand all that it was saying, but there were little nuggets of truth that kept coming down, little things that God kept downloading into my life. Listen, it's passages like that that grab us, that, that we have to go, I want to lean in to hear what God is saying because something is happening on the inside of you because of what you just read. You may not even recognize it, but something is happening. See, I believe that is biblical learning, where your spirit man learns before your natural man. Are y'all, are y'all tracking with me? Your spirit man learns before your natural man. Again, it doesn't mean that we're not supposed to pursue understanding. It doesn't mean that we don't want to understand. I want to understand. I want to be able to explain what I'm learning. But often the spirit man is learning first. It's understanding. It's that sensitivity to know that God is here, that you may not be understanding what he's saying, but you're willing to cooperate with whatever that he is saying. You're you're allowing God to lead you instead of you trying to lead God. Again, we pray a lot of times. We really want to say, God, your will, but really what we're saying, God, my will, be okay with my will. Listen, When you begin to discover that what seems to be like a passing thought or that you should call someone or say something, we've had those things drop down into our life and you do and it's a crisis moment for someone where your call, your text, your word of encouragement was the thing that they needed in that moment, it's amazing. Uh, About a week or so ago, I was running to the store and I was on my way and I drove past a yard sale and I don't know if you're a big yard sale person I'm not but I kind of bypass those most of the time but I looked over and I saw a Yeti cooler sitting out there in the middle and I thought oh that looks kind of nice I wonder how much they're asking for that I thought ah I don't have time so I drove on went to the store on my way back just felt again I need to stop by and see that Yeti and I'm thinking it's about the Yeti So I go up and ask him how much they want for it, and they were asking a little bit too much. And I said, "Uh, let me think about it. Started to walk away, and they go, well, how much will you give me for it? And I said, well, I'll give you this. And they go, okay, I'll take it. And I'm thinking, okay, did I really want to buy that? Well, I just bought it anyway, because I didn't think they'd take it. Well, she begins talking to me, and we discovered, she discovered that I was a neighbor. It was just a few houses or around the corner from my house. And we began talking. She said, what do you do? I I said, I'm a pastor, which a lot of times I don't like to say that because typically up to that point, people are cussing like a sailor in the moment I say I'm a pastor, they stop. And uh, not that I want them to keep cussing, it's just they start feeling bad. And I said, well, I'm a pastor. And she broke down, started crying. She goes, do you have just a second? Can I talk to you? 
And I said, yes. And she began telling me how just about a month or so before, her husband had actually committed suicide. And she had these questions about God and about where he was and about what did she do wrong and all these different things. And I was able in a moment, in about five minutes, to minister the love and hope of Jesus Christ to her. Yes, it's awesome. I believe that it was God speaking to me to stop. Are you all tracking with me? Now, I got a Yeti out of the deal, which is kind of cool too. But I believe God was speaking. And here's the thing. If you're not leaning into the fact that it's his presence that is his voice, those things that the thoughts keep coming down in your mind, you might miss it. You, you might miss an opportunity to speak life to somebody. You, you might speak an opportunity to share the love and hope with somebody. There's this other passage in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. It says this. He, talking about God, upholds all things by the word of his power. Listen, the entire universe is actually held in place simply because God speaks. It's his voice that keeps us alive. It's his voice that keeps us engaged with life. So much of the understanding of life is because of the fact that he spoke something to you in the night. Or he spoke something to you through a friend, through a circumstance, through a situation. God downloaded something into your life. That he arranged all the players in your life. I'm, I'm always amazed at how complex and amazing God is that he brings people into my life that are there to say a word for me that they don't even know what's going on to deliver a piece of information at the right place and at the right time that helped me make a decision later on in life or help me through a crisis moment of my life you realize that's what God's called you and I to do because see God is growing us to be more like Jesus if you've come to see salvation in Christianity as fire insurance Man, you're, you're just stuck at right. level one. Yeah. You're, you're, you're missing out on so much that God has for you because we get to be hope and love to people that need to discover hope and love. He, he's wanting us to be more like him. Jesus was the word made flesh, and he's wanting his word to become flesh again. He's wanting his children. He's wanting you and I to be able to model exactly what he's doing and saying in his word so that when they read the word that God is love, they see that from us. So that other people that are in our lives recognize we're becoming an exact representation of what is happening in the word of God. And it's a journey. Listen, don't beat yourself up because you're not where you need to be. Keep leaning into what God is saying. How do we do that? Faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing. But the capacity to actually hear, the emphasis of hearing comes from the word of God. Jesus taught in parables. I think it's interesting when you read that and discover that he taught in these parables. And he taught not just to illustrate biblical truths. Now, he did teach in parables to illustrate truths. But when Jesus' disciples asked him why he taught in parables, in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus explained to them why he taught in parables. Jesus said that he taught in parables so that those who don't understand won't understand. Now, we kind of think that seems a little bit unfair. But let me put it to you this way so that it makes more sense of why Jesus taught in parables. Jesus hides the truth in parables so that those who are not ready to obey will not understand. If you're not ready to obey the scripture that he wants, you won't understand it. Because if he increases the knowledge of those who are not ready to obey, he just increased their accountability. It's actually, watch this, the mercy of God to conceal truth and then make it to where only the hungry can find it. In the atrium in our house, uh, we have these really comfortable recliners. I don't know if y'all do that. And y'all ever just start binge watching a show and you're like, four shows later, you're thinking, what on earth are we doing? Well, Pam and I got those in work. They're super comfortable. You get so chilled out, you kind of become like a couch potato. And, and sometimes Pam will say, listen, I'm going to grab something to eat. You want anything? And I'll go, yeah, I'm starved. I'm starving. Could you do that? I wasn't actually starving. I, I wasn't. In, in fact, I wasn't starving enough to actually get my booty out of the recliner, all right, to actually go get it. Uh, I, was, I wasn't starving enough, but if the conditions are right, if you're going to bring it to me, if you're going to set it down right in front of me, in fact, if you'll even feed it to me, if that would work for you, you know, I'll consume it. And many people view hearing God's voice that way. 
If it, if it comes to me easy, if he knocks me down, m- many people are waiting to hear from God like Paul did on the Damascus Road experience where we get knocked off our donkey. I wanted to say something else, get knocked off our donkey, right? We, we want that. And God doesn't always speak like that. Listen, if it's forced upon me, if all the conditions are just right, then I'll receive it. Listen, but it won't, if you won't give the energy to it, if you won't pursue it, you're not actually leaning in. You're not hungry to hear God speak. What would God say if we told him yes? Y- y'all remember that story or movie a few years ago, Yes Man? Yeah. Me either. I didn't watch it either. But it was pretty funny <laughs> talking about learning to say yes to stuff, right? Listen, what if we said yes to God before he spoke? Right. What if we told him, man, I'll do it, whatever. Right. But I haven't told you what I'm going to do yet. I'll do it, whatever, whatever it is you're asking me to do. It's interesting, Jesus in John chapter 7, verse 7 said this, if anyone, so it's talking about all of us today, is willing to do his will. Are we willing to do his will? Or or are we trying to just figure out, okay, God, what's the bill to make heaven? What's the bare minimum I have to do to make heaven? Listen, you can do that and make heaven. You'll live in hell on earth. You'll, You'll live beneath your privileges as children of God. Live beneath the destiny and purpose that God has for you. So if anyone is willing to do his will, he will know of the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak of myself. What what Jesus is saying is if I'm willing to do whatever God says, my hearing will become clearer. It'll become clearer and I'll be able to discern God's voice. I'll be able to recognize things that he's saying to me. See, the ability to be able to discern comes through the willingness to obey. That's what positions you to be able to hear from God. That he's breathing into every business decision you're about ready to make. Every relationship issue that you're trying to walk through. Every health issue you're trying to overcome. Every emotional issue that has been jacking with you. God is speaking all the time to help you through that. There's a story in John chapter 12 that I don't have time to go into today where literally people heard the audible voice of God, but they weren't brought to faith. Because we get so busy that we hear the things going on around us, but we don't recognize it as the voice of God. Listen, I believe it's possible and necessary to live in a continuous state of anticipation of what God might be saying, of what it is that God might be doing right now, that we're anticipating it. We're, we're leaning in L- like, a, like a baby chick that it's parent is about, the ba- ba- mommy bird is about to feed it, that we've got our beak outstretched. We're anticipating what God is wanting to say. That's why we encourage you all the time, every time the word of God is preached, to lean into what God is saying. Listen, do we have to be entertained all the time? Okay, I didn't know if you knew the answer. I'll help you with those. No, we don't. If you want me to, I can learn how to juggle while we sit up here and talk. Sometimes we just got to lean in to what the word of God is saying. Listen, it's, it's why we do deep nights. Where, where sometimes we come and we have a night of prayer where we just wait on God. So it's why we do worship, nights of worship, where we, man, we just get to worship with God. They're designed for people who want to lean into what God might be saying, what God might be doing. In fact, especially on the nights when we have prayer, I'm always amazed that, that I come, honestly, with very little of an agenda. We're just saying, God, we want you to move. We want you to speak. And different leaders come up and they start speaking. And it's amazing what God begins to say to us. You know, I never leave disappointed that I came. I could have stayed home and watched The Bachelorette. And that would have been great for my life. That would have encouraged me how to have faith in God. Or I can come. Brianna's laughing. I can hear wherever she is. Because of the fact that I want to lean into God. I want to learn how to hear the voice of God. And for us, when we do those nights, it's really not about the number of people that show up. I like it when more people show up because it's more people that get into the presence of God. But it really is about God showing up and us being willing to follow his lead. See, we have to anticipate what God is really wanting to do. I have some friends that they talk so softly. Y'all have any soft talkers in your life? You literally have to lean into what they're saying. I have to watch their mouth and really pay attention to what they're saying. Or, or maybe for you, it's with your kids. Your kids are on the phone with their boyfriend or girlfriend, and they're talking really softly. And so as a parent, you're kind of really leaning in. Y'all know what I'm talking about? 
Some of your kids are sitting next to you and you don't want to give away secrets, but we do that. See, the whole point is when we want to hear, we lean in. We do. We, we, we anticipate. We, we give it our undivided attention. There, there are a lot of times when I go to my hit class um, in the mornings and, man, I do not want to be there. I mean, I literally do not want to be there. And if I'm not careful, I'll just kind of mail it in. Just kind of... Okay, whew, let's go. But when I think, I got up. I got dressed. I'm here. I got up at 4.30 to be here at this 5.15 hit class. I might as well do something while I'm here. Can I tell you, it helps me to focus. And when we come into the presence of God, whether it's in a service like this or we're having our quiet time, if it's just a checklist, we're missing the point. We're missing an opportunity to lean in and allow God to speak something to us, something fresh to us. We can go out of here one way and leave the same, or we can come out, of, come in here and leave changed by the presence and the power of God because God is always speaking. And what Jesus was saying in John 7 is the willingness to obey before he speaks is what attracts his voice. It is it, it attracts his voice to the situation that we may know we're dealing with or we may not even know that we're dealing with it. It attracts his voice. So two things that I hope you take away from today's message, which by the way, this isn't my closing. I didn't say that in the first service and I think people began shuffling and moving around. But two things I'm hoping is first of all, we learn to recognize that God is talking all the time. He is. I'm not always aware of it and sometimes I miss what he's saying. But he, he literally talks all the time. The second thing is, is that we have to learn how to live in a state of anticipation of what he's actually saying. We, we want to anticipate, we want to know that he is talking, and then we want to anticipate what it is that he's saying so that we're literally asking ourselves all the time, what might God be saying right now? It's for the mature who have trained themselves to think this way. See, I'm not sure how conversations with God go with you, but often when I have a question that I ask God in a moment, he doesn't answer me instantly. He he doesn't. And I I read a scripture and something, and I'm going, God, really, I don't really understand this. Or somebody brings up a question, and and I'm like, God, I don't understand this. Now, I want you to know that God will speak to me, but most of the time it's not in that moment. Sometimes it's weeks. Sometimes it's months later. But listen, When you ask a question, when you have a question, you and I have a responsibility to recognize the answer when it comes. We do. We've asked a question. We need to have that responsibility because sometimes it comes through a friend that you have during a conversation. You're just talking to them about something else and they say something and all of a sudden God says, that's the answer to the question that you've been wondering. Sometimes that person doesn't even know they're answering the question that you have. Are are y'all with me today? It may come from a podcast that you listen to. Maybe you listen to a message and it's happening weeks later to something you've been wondering about. Suddenly God downloads it into your heart. It might be in a worship song. As you're declaring the worship song, suddenly you say something and you go, oh, that's how that works. It it, it might be just this download that just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, God just reveals the answer to you. And you are able to hear God's voice because you are anticipating the one who speaks. So you gotta believe that he speaks, but you gotta be anticipating him speaking because that's how we learn to position ourselves to be hearers of the word of God. And it's huge. And the reason is because we're focused on hearing God. Not just in my quiet time or not just on Sunday, but we're focused all throughout the day. In Zechariah chapter four, verse 10, it says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. What, What does that actually mean? Listen, Don't discredit infancy. Listen, in other words, don't think it's inability when it's just small ability. Because I'm just learning it. I don't actually know how to do it because they're so much better than me. Listen, it may not have matured yet. It may not have matured yet in your life. When you discount or discredit the progress that you've already made, you miss out on what God has for you. You, you. You start criticizing it. And you start thinking of yourself as something that you're not when you actually are something that you are God says you are and you start hurting the progress is is that making sense in in other words I I can't be I'm not where they're at I can't do it that's not right you're just not as far along as they are 
Have you ever been around an overly critical person? Nobody nudge anybody. This happens a lot in church. The Spirit of God's moving, and you turn and say to them, man, isn't God's presence amazing? Don't you just feel God's presence? And they're like, no. And you go, well, he may not be moving in the three-foot circle, three circle that you're standing in, but he's moving. I can feel him. Listen, that critical spirit that, that attacks us, whether you're a pastor, a leader, a worship leader, small group leader, just a tender, anybody that is actually growing in the relationship with God causes you, if we're not careful, to see small ability as inability. Is that making sense? Somebody's got great revelation. You don't have it yet, so you think you can't get revelation? So it causes small ability to, for us to see it as inability. And if you're careful, not careful, it will cause you to despise the day of small beginnings. I've watched God do incredible things here at Amarillo Fellowship. And I watch the critics. And I'm talking about people who come here. People who actually like us and love us. I watch them critic. And if I'm not careful and if we're not careful, we can allow them to dig up a seed and kill it. Because it's not full grown yet. Because it's not mature yet. And, and when I look around and see all the powerful ministries and ministers who are having these incredible moves of God. And they're doing various ministries and ministries similar to what we're doing. But, but those ministries are, are like this delicious, fully developed apple. And, and I, I look and see what we're doing. And it feels like a really small apple. It's just beginning to kind of form on the tree. And it might be a little sour might be a little bitter, but it's 100% apple. Listen, and if you don't steward it into maturity, you start discrediting it, and it never starts becoming mature. Now, apply what, you're, what I'm saying in, to our ability to hear from God. Uh, here's what I want to encourage you to get today. Never say again, never imply again, it's hard for me to hear the voice of God. Never say it. Because it's actually in your nature. You are literally hardwired and designed by God to hear from God. Everything about you is wired and designed to perceive and recognize and have fellowship with Almighty God. That he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to dialogue with you. See, your, your thought should be, I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. It, it, I might not be there now, but it's not where I might be there now, but I'm going to get there someday. And I'm going to get there soon. And it's your yes, this yes to God before he speaks that positions you to lean in and anticipate what it is that God is saying to you. And most of the time it's that when God is speaking to us, it just becomes this real subtle impression that we suddenly hear. It feels like a passing thought. Like for me recently, one of the thing was, say it sold in Jesus' name. Just had this passing thought. And it's that impression, that passing thought that just is easy to miss as it actually is to get. It wasn't demanding. It was actually, you actually had to lean into it. You actually had to recognize what it is that is being said. Because at some point in a relationship with God, if, if you really want to go to the next level in your relationship with God, you're going to have to get tired of guarding your dignity and your reputation. See, God downloads things into many of your lives for a word for somebody around you. And, and I know why we get scared. If you were raised the way that I was, if anybody ever felt like they had a word for somebody, it'd always be, thus saith the Lord. Their voice would change, you know, and then sometimes it didn't happen, and you're like, well, I guess that's not what God said. But it's the willingness to step out when you feel like God's dropped something in your heart for somebody around you or a family member that you just step out and go, listen, here's what I'd encourage you to do it, how I would encourage you to do it. Go up to him and say, listen, this, this may not be God, but what I really feel like God's saying to me right now is that, hey, what you're going through, you're going through and you're going to come out the other side. Or, hey, here's the answer to the question that you have been asking, and you just step out in this moment of faith. It's that, it's that type of thing. Because, see, what if I step out and what I thought God was saying wasn't really what God was saying and nothing happens? Well, nothing's happening now, right? right? So why not step out and trust God? So a little over a year ago, I'd been trying to sell a car for a while. In fact, I had no bites on it for months. 
And one day I'm driving by the car and I just felt impressed to say, you are sold in Jesus' name. So I yelled it at the top of my lungs. You are sold in Jesus' name. Now, I had read a book a few years before that about a, a famous minister who actually had, had some houses he was trying to sell. And he said that, you are sold in Jesus' name. And they sold. Can I tell you, the next day, a guy called me about my car and he gave me more than I thought I was actually going to get from it. Yeah. Do, do you think that that matters? I do think it matters. I think that when we start projecting faith, God begins to showing up. And the point that I'm making is it's not about the prophetic. And I'm for the prophetic. It's not about signs and wonders. And I'm for signs and wonders. I'm for miracles showing up in our life. It's about the fact that God is always speaking. And you have the ability to always hear what he is saying about everything and anything that you're walking through. But we've got to lean in. We gotta learn, listen, we gotta learn how to lean in and you'll recognize better what is, it, is he is saying if you have a yes before he actually says it. God, I'm willing to do. Let me re read one more scripture and I am gonna be closing with this one. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 16 says this, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. I think this verse is really interesting because you would think that the veil is taken away so that someone could return to the Lord. But what it's actually saying is that there's actually enough evidence inside of us because we were all created in God's image, whether you're giving your life to Christ or not. There's, a, there's enough evidence inside of every one of us that if we'll just turn to God, if we'll just turn to Him, the thing that has kept them from the clear perception of the things of God is lifted and they see clearly. Clarity is the, is the reward for turning to God. Clarity and understanding is the reward for turning to God. And it's often a still small voice or an impression that we get so that we want to grow in the clarity of God speaking into our lives. But what regulates that clarity, again, is the ability to say yes to God ahead of times, to make a decision, I'm going to say yes before God speaks. So the answer to the question, how do I hear God's voice, is to first of all know that he's always speaking and anticipate and lean into what it is that he is saying. Listen, because I want you to know this, one word from God can change the trajectory of your life. It'll affect your life, and it'll affect everybody that you influence. We don't have to just hear it on Sundays. We don't have to just hear it in certain moments. We can hear it day by day and moment by moment. So I want to encourage you today, lean into God, have a yes.